Hi, Roy from Upsolver here. In this video, I want to show you how simple it is to build a production grade ingestion job from Postgres to Snowflake. Upsolver is modern data integration done right. It only takes a few minutes to set up and start loading data into Snowflake. Once running, there's almost nothing for you to do. Using our exact sync technology, Upsolver is able to guarantee exactly one's delivery with strong ordering. This greatly simplifies incremental loading of data into Snowflake and makes your DBT models simpler to write and manage. Absolver also automatically manages changing schemas by evolving the target tables, properly converting column types, and al allowing you to set data quality expectations to stop bad data from entering Snowflake. Finally, you get real-time observability of both your data and ingestion jobs right out of the box. All of the statistics and metadata are fully accessible to our APIs and Python SDK if you wanted to integrate it with your existing monitoring or data observability tools. So let's switch over to the Upsolver console and see how to set it up. In the Upsolver console, we're going to select the Postgres to Snowflake ingestion wizard. Once there, we're going to have to select or create our source. In this case, I already have one created. Next, we're going to choose our publication. This is, a, this is Postgres way of advertising which tables are available for replication. <clears throat> Next, we're going to choose the heartbeat table. Heartbeat table allows you to keep the connection going and keep everything kind of healthy when you have a database that doesn't have a lot of updates. Um, so this is super helpful. But if your database has a lot of updates, you may not need it. I say reference the, the Postgres documentation to learn more about that. The next thing you want to do is you want to select the schemas. In this case, we have two options. We have to manually select them, or you can use a regular expression. Very simply, a regular expression, you just pass you know, your regular expression, and then we automatically select it. So in this case, I want all the schemas with um, starts with the letter P. I can also say schemas and then which table. So I use the, the dot um, property here to basically say schema, period, and then which table I want. So in this case, I want all the tables that start with the word address. So you can see I select it selected automatically person and then the two tables, address and address type. And then the rest are not selected because they're not part of the uh, regular expression. But we're not gonna do that. We're actually gonna go and use uh, manually selected. So in this case, I'm just gonna select the person table, uh, schema. You can see here that we have um, a property or an option to automatically replicate new schemas to the target table. If this is selected, any new schema that added to your source database will automatically be replicated. You don't have to touch the job. You don't have to modify or update anything. Now this is available at each level. Also at the, at the schema level, we can automatically replicate new tables. So if you only care about replicating tables within a schema, you can check this box. Furthermore, within a table, you can Auto automatically replicate all new columns that are added to a particular table or select not to do that, not to do that. Sorry. Um, this is super helpful. So you don't have to kind of touch the job again and modify it. We automatically inspect the schemas and the tables and the columns and based on this configuration, automatically replicate those, those new changes to your target uh, system. So that makes it very simple, almost no operations and really no maintenance to, to do as new, things are added, new tables and schemas are added to your source database. So we're just gonna leave it like that and then we're gonna click next. Now we have a target uh, system already configured. We have Snowflake, of course, we can create a new one if we needed to. Uh, in this case, we're gonna actually choose where do we wanna store uh, our, inf our data. Now in this case, I'm only gonna store it here uh, in, in, in schema called Roy. Uh, if, there are, if I'm replicating multiple schemas, I can choose to actually add additional mapping. So in this case, let's say I want to have the production schema and I want to map that to um, you know, a different target schema, I can do that. In this case, I'm only replicating one schema, so there's really no need to, to touch that. Um, actually, let's go give it a different one and then we'll go, never mind, we'll go this. We go next. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to actually configure how frequently to update our target table. In this case, I want to update fairly frequently, so I'm going to choose one minute. Next, you can choose um, how you want to handle deleted rows. So in this case, we can either permanently delete the row, right? And this observer absolutely delete the rows in the target table, 
or we can mark the row as deleted by simply adding a new column called observer is deleted that's a boolean and that's set to true when the row is, is deleted in the source and it's false if the row is just updated or inserted. Um, so we're going to choose that. We also allow you to um, insert an observer event time column into your target table. And this is, uh, this is a time or the timestamp that observer inserts a row into, into Snowflake. And this is an incrementally um, uh, row timestamp so that you, if you need to manage your incremental models or if you're trying to catch late arriving events, you can actually build your incremental logic on top of this particular column and you know it's always globally incrementing. Um, and if you ever need to catch late arriving data, this is the best way to do it. So highly recommend using this, this particular column. All right, we click next and then we see that everything is already in place for us. Now we just click run and then the job will start running and then I'll come back in a minute and show you what it looks like. Okay, we ran the job. Now we're gonna switch over to the job monitoring uh, panel. Now in a job monitoring panel, there are two jobs created for us. The first one is called an input. The second one is called an output. When you click on the input one, you can see that there are multiple tables here that are now streaming. Before we started, these tables were automatically snapshotted, right? And then once the snapshot completed, now we begin to stream the CDC changes. The simply looking at this, we see everything is streaming correctly. And we know that our staging location is being loaded automatically from the, from the source database. So we'll switch over to the, the output job. Now the output um, job is actually divided into a number of um, <clears throat> sub jobs. And this is really, really a powerful feature. So every table in the source that is replicated gets its own individual job. You can see here, we're replicating a few tables, more will be added automatically. Uh, but in this case, we have a job per table. So that means that we can actually monitor the state and the health and the delay of either, each of these tables. So we can see right now there's no delay. There's data moving forward. Um, <clears throat> we can click on here and we can actually see that, you know, there's the amount of data written to, to the target, about 19,000 rows. Uh, if we want, we can click on all of these statistics and we can actually see what's going on. We can see that you know, we read 19,000 rows, we also wrote 19,000 rows. So now we know that, you know, it looks good. Like we're not missing any data. We can see how big that data is, right? It's four megabytes, not very big. Uh, and we get some, some statistics here on how uh, well we're writing data into the target system. So this is a really powerful way to kind of inspect all the different jobs that are, that are writing data into your target system. Now that we have that going, let's switch over to Snowflake, we'll refresh, uh, and we see here that we have some of our uh, tables already replicated. So we can click here, we can preview the data, and we can see that we have data. Um, we can also see here that we have the observer event time uh, column, we have the observer is deleted, and we also have an observer primary uh, key column, and this is because the source table did not have a primary key. With that said, I think we are done and I appreciate your time. Thank you.